Hello, I am Dr. Rashid Ahmed from the Department of Physics of Kohat University of Science and Technology. In the subject of Mathematical Methods of Physics 2 with the course code PHY222, we are at the lecture number 15 and the topic is Convolution. By convolution, we usually mean that uh, the overlap between uh, the two functions. But to make this idea concrete and see how it is useful in physics, uh, I would like to um, define it through an illustrative example. So let us start with this uh, uh, illustrative example and see how the idea of convolution comes out of it. So let us solve uh, an equation of uh, second uh, order that is uh, second order linear differential equation. Uh, you can see the first term of this equation is a y double prime where a is some uh, unknown constant and uh, the second term is b y prime and third is c y is equal to f of t and right hand side is not 0 but some function of uh, time. So, in this uh, case, uh, uh, this, this equation can be solved in a variety of, a variety of ways, but uh, here we would like to solve it uh, with the help of uh, Laplace transform. Here we are also given some initial conditions. Uh, you can see that uh, y0 and y0 prime is equal to 0. These are the initial conditions uh, given for the solution of this uh, differential uh, equation. So, we will use the uh, Laplace transform and you know that uh, uh, if you want to solve an uh, equation that is second order linear differential equation with the help of Laplace transform, then what we do is uh, to take the Laplace transform of each and every term. So, we will take the Laplace transform of this term and then of this term and then of this term and uh, lastly of this term and uh, find out uh, uh, what we get from uh, these Laplace transforms. So, let us take these Laplace transform. Uh, for example, of the first term, uh, we will get uh, a p square y plus b p y plus c y to L of t is equal to f of p. So, these are all the Laplace transforms and from this, if we calculate our uh, y, capital Y, that will be equal to 1 over 1 uh, a p square uh, plus b p plus c into f of p. And this uh, function uh, downstairs is uh, usually known as a transfer function. So, we now see that uh, the uh, y is a product of uh, two functions. It, it is written as a product of two functions. So, already uh, you could uh, see over here that we are getting the two functions and uh, it is their product. So, remember that convolution would be something uh, between uh, the overlap between two functions. So, the idea will be developing from here, but I just want to point out uh, for you that uh, uh, you uh, uh, follow, uh, follow this uh, procedure and see how convolution comes about. Okay, so coming back uh, to this uh, Laplace transform, now uh, what we uh, next uh, want to achieve is to uh, uh, write this transfer function and, uh, and uh, factorize it. So, as you can see over here in the denominator, we have uh, factorized the part of the uh, transfer function and written it uh, in the form a into p plus a into p plus b. So, if we find out the inverse transform of uh, uh, this transfer function and uh, another function which is coming uh, over here, we can uh, see that we can write it as a g of p as a product of two functions and uh, here you can see it is the first function g of t and the second function h of t. So, we would like to find out the inverse transform of the product of these two functions. So, this is the uh, transform uh, of the uh, of the first function g and this is the transform of the second function uh, h. Then uh, g and uh, h product can be uh, written uh, in this way as, uh, as you know. Uh, here we have just changed uh, the, uh, uh, the variable. So, we have made the uh, change of variable. Uh, to to uh, to uh, make it more uh, 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 to make it more convenient form that is change it uh, t 
uh, to sigma and tau over here so uh, you uh, should not confuse that uh, t is in, in both here so we in the first integral we have changed the t to the sigma and in the second integral we have changed the t to the tau so that uh, both the uh, uh, transforms uh, Laplace transform uh, look different from each other and then we can put uh, uh, these two integrals together and uh, uh, in, this, in this simple calculation you see that we can write it as uh, e raised to the minus p sigma plus uh, tau and uh, this is uh, now the combined double integral you, uh, you see over here. Okay. So uh, then the inverse transform over here uh, as you see that uh, we can change uh, the limits of, uh, of the, in this double integral and uh, uh, now this um, uh, uh, product function uh, can be written in this form uh, that is uh, e to the power minus pt into g t minus tau into h of tau and uh, if we uh, uh, split uh, these two integrals in this form and you see that this something in square brackets is actually the Laplace transform. So we can write this everything as a Laplace transform of this thing. So from here uh, we can uh, now uh, define the convolution and uh, you see here that uh, if I say that uh, sigma plus tau is equal to t and uh, sigma uh, then sigma is equal to uh, t minus uh, tau and d sigma is equal to dt then uh, I can define a new thing over here a new integral uh, which between uh, g of uh, t minus tau and h of uh, tau uh, is equal to g star h here star is uh, used as a notation and we call this uh, a convolution so it is called the convolution of uh, g and h so basically you can understand this integral which we got from the Laplace uh, uh, transform uh, as uh, the overlap between two functions. So roughly speaking if uh, I uh, plot uh, here for example uh, I have uh, some function uh, f let us say call it uh, f and I have another function let us say uh, 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 called g so this uh, uh, product uh, this area between them is uh, so to say is a convolution uh, between uh, these two uh, functions and what over here in this integral you can also find out that it is uh, this uh, in, uh, in inside this integral the g and h product is somehow giving us uh, the overlap between these two uh, functions and we define them as a convolution. So convolution is an important uh, idea in uh, mathematics which we can use uh, to model many interesting uh, physical phenomena. So uh, in this first part of the lecture you have seen that how uh, uh, we motivated uh, the, uh, uh, the convolution, the idea of convolution from uh, uh, solving the uh, second order differential equation with the help of Laplace transforms. And when we uh, solved that, we got two Laplace transform which uh, came into the uh, product. And then we uh, uh, written this product as a Laplace transform of a one function, which we call it now a convolution. Okay, now it's uh, now it's time uh, to give uh, an example uh, for the uh, convolution which we have developed. Uh, and in this example, we would like to solve. Uh, second order linear differential equation uh, uh, and uh, uh, with the help of convolution for example over here you see this uh, linear uh, differential equation in this form uh, where uh, it is uh, the exponential on the right hand side so we have uh, y double prime plus 3y prime plus 2y is equal to e minus e t uh, uh, and uh, e, e raised to the minus t and we have these initial conditions uh, these uh, that uh, at time t is equal to 0 so by this initial condition we mean that uh, what was the value of uh, y and its first derivative uh, when uh, time was uh, equal to 0 so uh, we assume uh, that uh, when uh, uh, y uh, when time was uh, 0 then y not and y not prime was equal to 0 so these are the initial conditions which we will then use in the solution of uh, this differential equation okay 
so uh, now we take the laplace transform and substitute the initial conditions over here so if we take uh, term by term the laplace transform of each term that is it is the first um, term laplace transform it is the second term and third term uh, and also put in the initial conditions then you know that uh, now our purpose is to calculate y and you see now again that it is uh, coming as a transfer function over here uh, you see the quadratic equation in terms of p uh, downstairs and then uh, some function mul uh, got multiplied so this is the laplace transform of e raised to the power minus t and this uh, we call uh, we call a transfer function so now we would uh, like to have uh, their inverses but before that we would like to factorize this so using the inverse transform so uh, what you can do that you can uh, just factorize it into two parts and then uh, use the Laplace transform uh, and uh, the inverse uh, transform would be of uh, this form as you can uh, see over here that it will it will it will be uh, transform of uh, Laplace transform of e my e raised to power minus t into minus e raised to power minus 2t into the e raised to power minus t and this can be written as uh, the uh, uh, capital G uh, a function of uh, p and uh, capital H as a function of p. So uh, by this we mean that here are two Laplace, uh, Laplace transform of two functions uh, this function uh, which you can uh, uh, say as uh, h after uh, transform and this function as a transform and again you see that here is some kind of convolution involved this e minus t coming again e minus t so th there is uh, an overlap uh, of uh, two uh, we are talking about the overlap between two functions. So uh, we have then y is equal to this uh, g of tau and to h of tau is uh, so it's a it's a convolution we are getting as a result of the solution of uh, this equation uh, as you can see over here this was the result of the uh, uh, transform or the solution of the uh, that equation which results in uh, in the form of uh, convolution and if we solve uh, if we try to solve this integral over here uh, then uh, you can see that it's uh, it, it, if you uh, if you multiply and take out uh, some uh, common factor and then you integrate uh, this uh, over here so at the end uh, what you get is uh, uh, this term and this could be further simplified uh, over here in this form so um, you have seen that uh, in this first part of the lecture that how uh, we define uh, the idea of uh, convolution from uh, uh, Laplace uh, transform and then uh, we use it to solve the second order linear uh, differential uh, equation. So uh, this uh, uh, idea of convolution is uh, not restricted only uh, to Laplace transform. We can uh, uh, show that the Fourier transform uh, of uh, convolution also exists. Uh, so what do we mean by this that if uh, we have uh, two functions for example f1 and f2 and uh, we want to take uh, their uh, Fourier transform rather than uh, Laplace transform uh, it is also possible that uh, the, uh, the product of their uh, uh, Fourier transform will again be a, a convolution. So now what we want to show is that uh, we have a function f1 uh, and it is uh, the uh, Fourier transform if you remember uh, from uh, our previous lectures uh, of the Fourier transform that uh, it was defined in this way. Uh, it is different from the Laplace transform as you can see now here and this 1 over 2 pi factor. So this is the Fourier transform um, uh, and it was defined for the continuous functions and non-periodic functions. So this f1 uh, you can think of as a continuous function of uh, v and if we uh, we want to uh, transform it uh, to the case of alpha uh, that is a continuous function and uh, we have then another function f2 uh, the same similar function which is a function of u so we are using here a different variable to uh, differentiate these two integrals and uh, again we want to transform it to the uh, alpha uh, to the same domain so uh, the uh, Fourier transform of this one and this one and their uh, Fourier transform of their products is uh, G1 alpha into G2 alpha and uh, our purpose is now uh, to see if the product of these two um, functions uh, 
uh, when we will get their Fourier transform then this is actually a convolution. So these are the Fourier transforms as I have already explained of these two functions f1 and f2. So uh, as I said that uh, our purpose is now to show that the product of uh, these two Fourier transform is uh, a convolution. So uh, we can uh, uh, make uh, some simplifications uh, by multiplying these cofactors over here and these are the two integrals and if this exponential and this exponential uh, come in into together. So it is uh, uh, basically we are combining the two uh, integrals into one integral and uh, uh, you see now it is a double uh, integral. So uh, uh, this uh, here could be solved uh, with the help of a change of uh, variables. So let us say we call uh, we bring in a new variable x which is equal to v plus u then uh, dx will be equal to dv uh, and uh, we can uh, now substitute it over here and you see that if we make this substitution uh, then uh, the f1 will be function of x minus u and f2 will be uh, only a function of u and again you probably would uh, already see a convolution over here between uh, uh, over the variable u and there is some product uh, overlap uh, uh, between uh, these two functions. So uh, convolution is emerging over here. So uh, to make it more, com uh, more explicit uh, you see that uh, we taken this first integral and now you see that this is uh, something uh, some uh, uh, product some overlap between these two functions and uh, this uh, uh, their uh, Fourier transform is actually is g1 g2. So this we call a convolution. So you see that uh, as from the case of the Laplace transform uh, we motivated and defined uh, the idea of convolution the same is true for the Fourier transform from which we got the idea of convolution. So you see that this convolution uh, between f1 uh, and f2 uh, represented by the star is equal to uh, uh, this idea over here, uh, this uh, overlap over here and it is uh, just the same as uh, we defined in the case of the Laplace transform. So uh, then uh, you can write uh, g1, g2 as here as a notational change, just the f1 uh, uh, star f2 and uh, we see that uh, we can write 1 over 2 pi as a Fourier transforms of uh, f1, f2 because this is just a definition of the Fourier transform and uh, so therefore g1, g2, the product of g1, g2 and 1 over 2 pi are a pair of Fourier transforms. So this convolution is actually a pair of uh, is a is a Fourier transform of G1 G2 or G1 G2 is a Fourier transform of F1 uh, star F2. So uh, pair of Fourier transforms it gives us a pair of Fourier transforms. So you, uh, so we can uh, work in the other way uh, as well. For example, we can write that uh, G1 and G2 uh, have a convolution and F1 and F2 is uh, there. Fourier transform. So these are the some references. So again uh, to summarize for you uh, whatever we have uh, learned today is uh, uh, the idea of convolution and you have seen that I have uh, defined it for you uh, from two different uh, kinds of uh, transforms. First uh, it was uh, defined from a uh, Laplace transform and then it was defined from the Fourier transform. So basic idea is the overlap between uh, two functions when there is a product of two functions and uh, there is an overlap between them uh, then uh, uh, we, we call it a uh, convolution and the more is the overlap between them the more is the convolution and you have seen that uh, we can use this idea of convolution to, uh, to solve actually uh, different uh, uh, kind of, uh, second order linear differential equations. So um, first we uh, taken uh, the example of Laplace transforms where we have seen that uh, uh, from the uh, second order linear differential equation we were able to write out the uh, product of two function as uh, uh, the um, convolution uh, uh, and uh, as a uh, convolution of the Laplace transform and then uh, we were also able to do the same thing for the Fourier transform. Uh, I hope uh, uh, you have understood the idea with this, I thank you.